So, you know, I should be writing right now. I'm actually not. It's NaNoWriMo. I only have like 16,000 words and I want to hit 20k by today, but whatever, you know, I can totally do it, right? I thought I was a good procrastination before NaNoWriMo started, but now I am just the queen of getting every single thing in this universe done except for my words. Plus the fact it's like the 8th of November and I haven't filmed this yet and you're probably wondering what I read and I read the least amount of books I've read all year. I kind of gone insane, at least, you know, more than usual. Salutations! Welcome! Welcome to Loving the Language of Literacy, my name is Sophia Lee, and so I'll be doing my October 2015 reading wrap up. I don't know how I honestly manage this, but when I am most busy, I get the most things done. Whether it's reading books, writing words, or doing every other obligation and commitment I have in the universe, I get the most of it done when I actually don't have the time to get it done because that makes me, you know, prioritize and actually not spend forever on YouTube watching videos that I've already watched before and playing more two dots on my phone. Now on level like 225. I spend all my time on that. It's not very helpful. Oh, wait, I think I might be on 325. I don't know. Being the 8th of November, I had the retrospective to know that I've already read four books this month and that my November wrap will probably have like, you know, 15 novels on it just because it's NaNoWriMo. Why write when you can just read or listen to more audiobooks? I mean, where's the logic in that? The first book I read this month was What If? Serious Scientific Answers to Absurd Hypothetical Questions by Randall Moore. And to be honest, I feel like a complete geek for reading a book based about physics, even though I didn't understand a good number of the principles and concepts the author was talking about, I sincerely enjoyed the questions, the way he answered them, and the way that me as a high schooler could actually understand and comprehend what was going on. And I gave it four out of five stars, and it was just a really nice, refreshing kind of book because I don't normally read nonfiction and I don't normally read books about science, even though I do love science, so it was just a really nice change overall. Then, upon Christine's recommendation, I listened to the audiobook for Percy Jackson's Greek Gods by Rick Riordan, and I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. While I do love hearing from Percy and his voice and the vibrance that he brings, it dragged on for a long time, and yes, I understand it's more of an anthology than anything else, just because you're supposed to read like each little chapter about the gods and the creation of the earth and everything else, but I listened to it in one pretty much straight shot. It wasn't that entertaining. Rick Riordan obviously added the most humor he possibly could and made it the most interesting because of course he's writing for like middle grade-ish audiences. It wasn't captivating to me and I wasn't, to be honest, that interested in all these gods even though I do love reading about them. It's really a puzzle to me as to my feelings and why I wasn't the most satisfied with this book. Then I have my first five star of the month and I did give a heck of a lot of five star ratings this month. I don't know whether it degrades my credibility or whether it just proves that I've been picking really good books because I've actually figured out that when I do read less novels because of time crunches, I tend to enjoy them more, mostly because I'm dragging them out for so long that I have to enjoy them to stick with them. This book, of course, was Fight Club by Czech Penowick. I'm not sure that's how you pronounce his name. Of course, I'm never sure how you pronounce an author's name, so whatever. I'm also not sure how I should explain this. How does the synopsis even go? I'm really unsure, actually, of how to talk about this. Basically, this book follows a protagonist who has discovered this thing called Fight Club, which is where all these young men across the country basically get out all their negative energy against the world and everyone else in it, and they just fight barehanded for as long as they have to. The protagonist goes against this antagonist named Tyler Durden who started the Fight Club. It's a revenge plot against the entire universe. The goal is to destroy the entire world. I don't even know. I'm not comfortable with that synopsis either just because it's so complicated. The main way I would describe it is don't go into it knowing anything and it is most definitely a psychological thriller. There's just this sarcastic satirical way while still being completely straightforward with the audience how he tells the story and I appreciated it so much. Such a refreshing voice. Then I gave three out of five stars to Neil Gaiman's newest release which is The Sleeper and the Spindle which is actually a collaboration with Chris Riddle the illustrator. First of all it's gorgeously illustrated. It's all in black and white drawings except for details with this kind of I don't know if you call it goldish, bronzish, dark yellowish. I'm so terrible at describing colors. That is the only thing actually in color. And it tells a kind of version of Sleeping Beauty without actually being Sleeping Beauty. Of course, it's completely a Neil Gaiman take off the story. I really liked how he did it. I just, I wasn't captivated. I wasn't motivated to keep on reading. The writing was good, but the story itself, I just wasn't the biggest fan. Of. Even though there was quite a feminist twist on it, which I most definitely appreciated. Then we have one of the only books that I read in physical copy this month, and that was The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness, which I gave another 5 out of 5 stars to. I've learned this month that I am in love with Patrick Ness. His storytelling, his writing style, oh my goodness. He's so 
sarcastic, but he's so truthful simultaneously. I was in New York City for the Manhattan Cross Country Invitational. When you're in New York City and you're in a big mall, you don't go to like Forever 21 or H&M or anywhere else. You go to, you know, Target. My friends and I made a beeline for the book section and here I found 20% off the signed first edition copy of The Rest of Us Just Live Here. I've wanted to read Patrick Nesswick for so long. This is another book that I'm not quite sure how to explain it and that's what I found is the pattern with all Patrick Ness's books that I've read so far. The thing about it is that it's a mockery of a lot of just young adult high fantasy novels. There's this storyline going on where there's all these indie kids who are aka the chosen ones and they're the ones who have bad things happen to them, they're the ones that the end of the world relies on, but then they're the ones who are the normal people who just live on the this planet and do their own lives, but they do have their own problems. I loved this book because of the way everything came together and the way that it encapsulated high school so perfectly and the way that it just encapsulated being normal but still having issues of your own. The next book I read was another Patrick Ness book and that was A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. This is actually the only Halloween-ish spooky kind of vibe book that I read in the entire month of October. I did love this novel. I gave it again 5 out of 5 stars. This is nothing that you actually expected. There's this monster that comes to this little boy's He's not that he's like 10. Window every night made of the yew tree. On an exterior level, is struggling with the fact that his mom is in the hospital and she's dying from cancer. And he has to overcome that and face it just because he's 10. He's not quite processing it the way that he should. And we never really know if he's conjured up this monster in his head or if it's actually real. But the monster makes him face the facts. And it's just a wonderful novel about dealing with grief and loss and what to do when your parents are dying and how to combat with the people around you. And especially because I've lost my own mom, it just hit home so hard, and the way that Patrick Ness articulated it, everything was just so, again, gorgeous. Then I finally read this book. Technically, I didn't read it because I listened to it as an audiobook. That is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, and yes, 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 I know I DNF'd it, but previously I only gave it four to five stars though, because of a few issues I had with it. I think everyone on booktube knows what this is about. It's basically a memoir of everyone on booktube, and the thing that's important about how I read it and how I um, consumed the story was that earlier this month I completed my very first half marathon. That was a wonderful experience by itself. What I did the entire time was I listened to the audiobook. The one complaint I have for this novel, in the end I did see how everything wrapped together so nicely and how everything was needed in the story. I just thought that it dragged on and on and on and on and by the halfway point of the audiobook I was just like, what more can we do with this story? And of course there was the necessity of having characters butt heads and fall apart and get back together, but I just thought it dragged on for an extremely long time. And then we have another audiobook. I obviously didn't read much physical text, and I read even less physical in a form of a book text. My reading style, my reading preferences, the way I read books has changed a lot since school started, since 2015 started, and I just, I'm going with it. I'm evolving as a reader and as a person, so let's just accept it and move on. The book I listened to was Not That Kind of Girl by Lena Dunham, which I gave, sadly, two and a half, three stars out of five. I haven't actually watched anything with Lena Dunham in it. I know I just heard a lot of hype surrounding it last year, and I was like, Hey, I should read this book. I like memoirs now. Let's give it a go. I didn't know that much about her. I didn't care that much. But I did really appreciate the feminist tone to the entire novel and the way that she just told it like it was. She talked about sex. She talked about her body. She talked about things going on in her life, her relationships, her failures, her struggles, her successes in both her career and personal life. And I really did appreciate her rawness and her honesty. But it seemed like there wasn't that much of a direction. I have a problem with the way that these people are still alive. And this isn't a picture-perfect novel that an author just conjured up, but this is a person's real life. And then we have the last book I read this month. This one I also didn't read. The book, which was another 5 out of 5 stars. I know I've given like 4 books 5 stars this month, but I just... I loved this so much. I can see why it's a favorite. I can see why there's so much praise and just hype surrounding it in general. And that was Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore by, damn it, this messes up my whole flow, Robin Sloan. How do I freaking describe this book? I actually would love to compare it to I Am The Messenger by Marcus Zusak, just because of the crappiness of the storytelling as well as the more lost qualities of the protagonist of both novels. This follows suffering computer web designer Clay Janet. He's down and out. He doesn't have a job. He doesn't really have a direction in life. He's like, I don't know, in his 
late 20s, early 30s, and all of his other friends who went to college where they're all successful, big business owners, and he's just clay. So one day when he's looking at the Help Wanted ads, he comes across this place called Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore. He sees a lot of different characters. Some of them are there for just getting a book and just wandering into the store in San Francisco, but these other people are part of this kind of mysterious... You could almost call it a book lending club. Gradually, as we read on the story, we learn that this whole... I don't know if I want to call it conspiracy. This whole underground organization and the reason for Mr. Penumbra's existence in general and his role as a bookshop owner is discovered. It was a great cast of characters. The story developed so well and it was very concise and tight-knit compared to a lot of the novels I read or listened to this month. At the root of it, the reason why so many book lovers love it is because it really captured the essence of reading and literature in general and why we enjoy books so much and consume knowledge and consume story. It was a bookstore! It was a 24 hour bookstore. Do I need to say anything more about it? I think not. Tell me in the comments below what you read this month. What was your favorite book? What was your least favorite book? What books you're looking forward to reading in November? If you're doing NaNoWriMo like I am, we all know from all those videos I posted. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Keep calm, read on, and I'll see you in a video soon. Goodbye! If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and leave me a comment below. And if you liked it even more, hit the subscribe button. All my social media is around my face at Books, and my previous videos are below me.